So we've come to the end of the basics of statistics, right? And there's a lot more in statistics that I'd like to teach you. Um, and I want to start teaching about data science too. But again, my issue is how much content is too much for a beginner to absorb, right? So we've decided to call it a day with this episode, uh, which is multivariate analysis and final words. So let's get right to it. Okay, so most statistical studies involve more than one or two variables. So far, we've been talking about two variables, right? We've been saying, okay, what, what's the correlation between height and weight? And the goal is still to find interdependence between them. And even if you have three variables or four variables, you can actually find interdependence between all three or four of them. Many different things can be correlated. So for example, your blood sugar and your cholesterol levels could be related to a third variable, which is your cause, all cause mortality, which is how likely are you to die, right? So your chance of death can be correlated with um, your blood sugar levels and your cholesterol levels. And that's just, and that's just three variables. You can actually have many different variables that are related to your chance of death. Um, the correlation coefficients for bivariate, which is two variables and multivariate, which is more than two variables are performed using a computer, right? So you actually have many different tools that can do this. Um, I think IBM has one, one tool that allows you to map out correlation coefficients and find patterns. We're not going to go in depth. I just want you to know that it's there and multiple things can be related. That's why I said statistics is really complex and the way newspapers or media sites make it seem, it's just not like that right? That's not how things are related. And you can't make such simplistic claims about everything. I want to tell you some final words. And, you know, I would like to present it to you guys in the form of memes. So dear news media, when reporting poll results, please keep in mind the following suggestions. If two poll numbers differ by less than the margin of error, it is not a news story, right? So that margin of error, the t test, it has to be statistically significant, right? And that's the margin of error, the, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to eliminate. Scientific facts are not determined by public opinion polls, right? So you can't just ask 100 people, what is the size of Mount Everest? And then just say, I think this is the size of Mount Everest because 100 people said it. You need to conduct real tests. You need to go and measure it, right? Um, a poll taken of viewers and internet users is not a scientific poll. Right. And the reason for this is because you need to have a diverse sample size. You need to have blinding. Remember, we told you how to conduct a good test. Uh, so you can't just ask questions which have random viewers or internet users without having proper sampling. All right. Finally, you know, sometimes when you're presented with a poll, you just take something randomly, right? Many people do that. In fact, you'll be surprised by on an internet poll, how often people just select one of two options. There needs to always be a third option, which is whatever, or I don't care so that you're able to go to, to the next page without, or, or, you know, you're not just putting in stuff because you have only two options. A lot of times people just don't care, right? And you should allow those people to self select themselves out because if they don't, then they select one of two options randomly and they will skew your tests, especially when you, when you're asking people to choose between just two options, right? So you need to have a don't care or whatever. And you guys have taken a basic statistics course. So signed, someone who took a basic statistics course, which is you guys. Uh, so uh, sometimes this happens, right? So when you're filling out a reader survey for some sort of magazine, um, somebody asks how much money they, you spend on gum each week. So this person actually wrote in $500 for my age. I put in 43. And when they asked what my favorite flavor is, I wrote garlic slash curry, right? So that's the cool part that when you ask for data, and you ask for data in an anonymized fashion where people can just on the internet or through mail or something, just put in some numbers, they can put in rubbish, right? And rubbish data, especially with statistics is outlier data, right? You need a way to clean out that data or say that, you know, this person was obviously trolling, but a lot of times date, especially online, these polls and results, there are a lot of people who are trolling that completely skew the results, right? So you people mess with data and you have to be very careful about who you let in. You should check us out. We are the fastest growing religion in the country. And someone else says fastest growing is such a dubious claim. And this person says, it's true. We grew by 85% over the last year and 85 sounds like a big number. And then this person says, you know, the other person says, Hey Rob, want to join my religion? And another person called Rob says, sure, whatever. And this person says, well, 
looks like my religion grew by 100% this year, right? And this person says, well, we have 38,000 members. And this guy says, hope they're all okay with second place. And this tells you a lot about sample size, right? This tells you a lot about the number of people involved. If I say I'm the, I'm the fastest growing company in the world with, in terms of number of employees, and I grew from two employees to four employees uh, in less than three days, then technically I am one of the fastest growing companies in the world because I just doubled my employee count. But it's just that the base number is not big enough, right? And many times, you know, when companies say that they're fast growing or they're growing by X percentage year on year or the revenues have grown 100% year on year, look at the base size, right? Were the revenues just 20 rupees last year and they grew to 40 rupees because that's still a 100% increase in revenues, right? So you have to be very careful about the base size and the sample size. Some of the most famous geniuses in the world slept only four hours a night. And I'm doing four hours a night too, because you know what they say, correlation is the same thing as causation. And then nobody says that. And this person says, all oh, right, I should take the word of an oversleeper. And this meme is very simple, right? It just tells you that, look, just because somebody wakes up at 5 a.m. or somebody, you know, just sleeps four hours a night and that's why they're successful, you can't draw a straight line correlation between the number of hours they sleep and whether they're successful or not, right? Because firstly, correlation is not causation. I think I've beaten that horse dead. Maybe the people who slept just four hours a night are doing 50 other things that cause them to be successful, right? Because I know I'm an oversleeper, right? I sleep like eight, nine hours a night sometimes, right? And um, I'm still, you could call it reasonably successful in my domain of expertise, in multiple domains of expertise. But there are also people who sleep four hours who do really well, right? In my opinion, that's not very related to success, right? It's the other factors there are. And that's what we're trying to do with statistics, right? We're trying to avoid people making these statements that waking up at 5 a.m. or doing this or doing that causes success or causes this or causes that. Stop believing that bullshit, right? At the end of the day, it's about trying to find out proper causation. This caused this. Now, I'll tell you one thing that is causative and not just correlated. If you are born into hardcore poverty, then your chance of success is very low. In fact, Poverty causes lack of success. It's a causative factor, right? And we ignore this sometimes, right? And we don't understand that a lot of people who are successful, they didn't have extreme poverty to deal with. They might have had some amount of poverty, but extreme poverty is something that's very hard to move away from. And that's what we need to understand, right? Instead of making these baseless or looking at baseless correlations and saying that, you know, this person slept four hours, that is why he's successful. Don't make correlation causation. They're not the same thing. Um, Here's an example. Here are two funny examples, right? The number of people who drowned by falling into a pool correlates very strongly with the films Nicolas Cage appeared in. The correlation is very high. It's the R value is 0.66, which is a high value. And as you can see from this graph, you know, these two things happen in a very strong correlated manner, but we know it's not true. This is rubbish, right? These are two random different things that are just put together just because the graphs look the same. And on the other hand, you have Internet Explorer versus murder rate. As more and more people stopped using Internet Explorer, lesser number of murders happened. Um, even though they, they, there's a very strong correlation between the two, we know for a fact that uh, people switching browser doesn't mean they go out killing people. These two things just happen at the same time. It's random chance. And in the world, a lot of things happen due to random chance. I think I've, I've said that a million times, but it's very important for you to understand this, right? It's very important for you to understand this because you will prevent yourself from doing random stupid behaviors in life because you think that two things are causative when they might just be correlated. That is that for the basics of statistics course. You know, thank you for joining me on this course. I know that, um, you know, we've went through many different concepts. And hopefully you have a basic understanding of statistics so that either you're able to take the advanced part of the course when we put that out, or um, you're able to go and do your own research because I've given you a visual overview of this, right? I've given you a visual and a big picture overview of this. We've gone into some of the granular details and it's up to you now to dive as deep as you want to. At the end of the day, that's the point of meta to give you a taste of every different um, department or field so that you're able to put them together in any way you like and go into depth into anyone you like. That's it for this episode. Catch you on the next series. Bye-bye.